Thank you for joining us. My name is Cindy Cook and I'm an equine nutrition consultant for Purina. And today we're going to be talking about the basics of broodmares and their feeding. So thank you for joining us and we'll start right now. Looking after the broodmare is a very important uh, part of a horse person's life and is uh, certainly significant. Uh, we're going to have a few goals today to get through this presentation. First, we're going to give you some general information for the needs of the mare and the foal. Second, we're going to uh, try to give you an understanding of some of the nutrients that uh, the mare and foal need. And third, we're going to apply these recommendations with the feeds uh, from the Prina maternity lineup. Today, I would like to start my presentation just discussing water and its role for the breeding animals. We know water is very important to all horses, but um, very much so for your broodmare and your foal. It helps with digestion, saliva production, temperature regulation, and metabolism, and all those things are affected, certainly when a broodmare is in full. Water loss can occur in feces and urine, respiration and sweating. And water temperature and flow rate, buckets versus automatic waters, smell and taste, the pH level of the water all influence how much that mare is going to drink. Salt intake also affects how much that mare is going to drink. And we need to be mindful of these things. There's other things that influence drinking habits, such as whether the horse is still being worked, weather, etc. Next, when I look at balancing rations for broodmares and foals, I always look at the hay. This is just an example of a hay test done by Purina. And just a reminder to people that are watching this today that hay is all different. So different cuts from different fields at different times of the summer all can give you different analysis. So it's very important that your broodmare and your foal as it starts to develop is given good quality hay. Pasture quality and amounts and the changes to the diet need to be done slowly and adjusted accordingly based on what's going on in that mare's life and where she is in that gestation. And it will change greatly as that foal grows in utero. Water consumption affects the ability for that maternity mare to process her hay effectively. And that's why I started today's presentation, just reminding you to talk to your customers about good hydration habits. The nutritional requirements differ from other classes of horses. Nutrient requirements vary drastically throughout the year. Forage sources vary throughout the year, so that also influences how that broodmare is doing. And the amount fed, so how much forage to grain ratio is that animal being fed and that will change as that mare moves through her gestation. We remind people again that if hay quality is at question, forage collaborators are recommended, such as the Superfiber Classic and the Superfiber Nature to help support a good quality hay program. Factors to keep in mind. At different stages of reproduction, the breed and the temperament can greatly influence the individually individual requirements of that broodmare. And feed management is a key factor. So the frequency and the regularity, the location, it does not necessarily affect, but does influence which may be, which feed type, I should say, that would be best to feed and in what physical form. The four nutritional stages are conception, early gestation, late gestation, and lactation. After that comes weaning when the foal is weaned from the mare. Body condition scoring and understanding what she is doing through her gestation is very important and a hay belly or a full belly is not body condition. Assessing your horse's top line is very important. It's no longer acceptable to have a sway back for that old mare and making sure that your ration is appropriately for good amino acid profile is important. Early gestation requires only maintenance level of nutrition and that foal grows very slowly. However, it's very important if that mare is in full to treat her as such. In mid gestation, the levels start to increase slowly, but are fairly close to maintenance. There is a higher bone turnover in the mare. This is an example of mid gestation and how going from the fifth month to the eighth month, the calories, the protein, the calcium and the phosphorus and the demands on that mare start to increase. The last 90 days are the most critical. But note it from before, influences from fifth month and on are very important. Gestation that occurs between the ninth and the eleventh month. The last ninety days are the most critical, and it is influenced from the fifth month of gestation onwards. The demands of the fetus increase greatly, and increase the mare's stores for later. 
The unboned foal is growing rapidly at this point, about a pound a day, and a growing higher percentage of bone is utilized. During lactation, mares produce approximately 3% of their body weight in milk over the first 12 weeks of lactation, and approximately 2% of their body weight in milk from the 13th to the 24th week of lactation. Energy needs at this time can be as high as 75% over maintenance, and variation will occur based on the quality and quantity of milk. And what I mean by that is genetically speaking, all mares are different and their milk quality is different and their quantity of milk is different. So this is where we come in and choosing the right products to support that. Nutrient increases from late gestation to early lactation. So the demands on the mare are great. When we get into weaning the mare, facilitating that means decreasing the mare's caloric intake and helping to dry the mare up quickly with the least amount of discomfort. She may lose some body condition due to the stress, but will regain it post weaning. However, when restricting calories, always make sure your vitamins and your minerals are kept up utilizing optimal to ensure that the next growing fetus is not affected negatively by the current weaning situation. This particular strategy is one that I see often missed and a reminder to your customers to making sure when they're weaning to use a ration balancer is crucial. Evolution Maternity is our go-to premium product and it's for customers wanting low sugar and starch nutrients. So that's low non-structural carbohydrates. It's highly fortified and has highly digestible fibers. So very flexible in all hay situations. So if you're in a situation where you're making recommendations and you don't know what the quality of hay is, this is a good consideration. Omega-3 and pre and probiotics with Diamond V are another great part of this particular product. And the um, format is multi-particle. It is the preferred product for fast and large growing horses and breeds susceptible to DODs and OCDs. However, this product does require excellent hydration. It does contain very digestible fibers. Omelene 300 is our sweet feed program. It's highly fortified and is suitable for customers wanting to see the grains. It too contains omega-3 and your pre and probiotics with the Diamond V XPC. It does require a good hay program, so that is a reminder to your customers. The hydration status of the mare could be a little more flexible because it doesn't contain the deep fiber content that the previous, previous product does, but a reminder, this is a high non-structural carbohydrate product. The Sport XT has been recently updated to be used not only for sport horses, but for maternity horses for people preferring an extruded product. It's highly fortified. It contains omega-3 with Diamond V XPC. This program does require a good hay program to collaborate with it. Hydration status of the mare can be a little more flexible due to the, due to the digestibility of the extruded product. It works really well in a group feeding product situation because the horses can't sort, and I often use it in situations where we have automatic feeders. Again, a reminder, this is a higher NSE product. The Equilibrium Pro Plus is probably one of our products that's a little bit overlooked and maybe not used enough for people that are perhaps on a budget, but still want to provide excellent nutrition for that brood mare in full. It is highly fortified. It comes in a pellet form and it does contain yeast. It does require a good hay program. The hydration status is a little more flexible for this product as it's grain based. It's fantastic for group feeding situations because the horses cannot sort. It is considered a higher NSC product. Again, it's very good for group feeding situations and is more economical than the previous products mentioned. For the lactating mare, owners need to watch the nursing mare's nutrient input to output relationship. So earlier in our presentation today, we talked about body condition scoring and top line evaluation scoring. So managing the horse through the whole uh, gestation period from the beginning to the end to foaling is highly critical and the rations will change accordingly. If calories are in short supply, her fat stores will be used up and she'll lose body weight, so she'll look a lot thinner. If protein, which is your amino acids, is in short supply, her muscles will be sacrificed and she will lose her top line. So that's that top line evaluation scoring that was discussed. If major macro and micro minerals are in short supply, her bone and liver stores will be compromised. So again, balancing the ration for all the nutrients is very important. 
Another challenge I see out there in the field is the obese mare, and this is often very challenging because we want to make sure that this animal has the right uh, nutrition to uh, grow the foal and foal out and lactate properly and be rebred. And again, looking at the body condition score and the top line evaluation score is very important. So if protein, which is your again, your amino acids are in short supply, her muscles will be sacrificed and she will lose her top line. So having the horse on nothing but hay is not an option. Use of a ration balancer like the Optimal fills that protein need and does not contribute significant calorie. If macro and micro minerals are in short supply, her bone and liver stores will be compromised. So again, you can't expect this broodmare who is growing a foal to live on just hay when all those types of macro and micro minerals go up and down based on the quality of hay. So please provide a ration balancer in this situation and optimal is the key choice. The nutrition of the growing horse is one that can be challenging and difficult just depending on the management on the farm and the customer that you're talking to. So we'll talk briefly about foals, weanlings and yearlings. At birth, at normal size foals should weigh between a 10 to 12 percent of the mare's body weight. A maiden mare foal, which is a foal is a mare that has never had a foal before, should weigh out between 8 to 10% of the mare's body weight. So they're a little bit smaller. So one of the things about feeding the foal is it begins by feeding the brood mare properly. And this goes all the way back to the beginning of the gestation cycle. On average, foals should reach 50% of their mature weight and 85% of their mature height by six months of age. First, first month of age, the mare's milk provides most of the foal's requirements. And any stress under 10 days of age leads to digestive upset and ulcers. The composition of the mare's milk can vary greatly depending on the breed of the mare, uh, the type of the mare, how well she was fed, and then the demands on the mare and how much that foal is nursing and taking from that mare. And it will start to decrease through the lactation. With weanlings and yearlings, each foal is an individual and sexes differ greatly between colts and fillies and how they grow. Watching for growth spurts, having them too thin or too fat is very important and understanding just how much growth happens in 18 to 24 months. Knowing what's in the hay, if you can, during this time when they're weanlings and yearlings is very important because their hindgut is just developing and they don't have the ability to utilize hay as effectively as a mature horse. So having that discussion with your customer is highly beneficial. Do not feed or overfeed, I should say, energy or calories. Having a fat weanling or foal or yearling is not good for the horse, for its development and for its bones. So making sure it's of correct body condition score is very important. So there's a lot of talk in the industry about the different types of complications young horses can get and what that means as they move through their life and how long their life is going to be based on how well they develop. So developmental orthopedic diseases, DODs, is a very common term. Osteochondrisis is one of the main ones that people talk about out in the industry today. Things like acquired angular limb deformities, fasciitis, or some people call it epiphysitis, subchondrial cystic lesions, flexural deformities, and juvenile arthritis are all things young horses can develop if not looked after properly. There's a lot of factors for DODs and uh, what influences this, and one of them being a mineral imbalance, abrupt dietary changes, the environment, exercise, genetics, Ration balancing, including all forages and grains and supplements. You need to look at the whole picture when you're looking at these youngsters to ensure that they're getting all that they need. Monitoring the growth or what we call average daily gain is very important. So they should be tape weighed and measured on a regular basis. One of the things I think a lot of people miss because maybe they're concerned about the young horse's safety or they don't have the staff or the labor ability to have those horses going in and out, but a young horse should get at least 17 hours of turnout. And that means turnout outside, walking around, moving around, running around, and very important that they have that impaction on their limbs for that hardness to the ground. In our happy world, they'd be out 24 seven, but we understand in some situations that's not possible, but the goal should be a minimum of 17 hours. 
I think if any of these particular situations uh, can't uh, work for the barn uh, scenario that you should be consulting with your veterinarian and making sure everything is addressed to ensure that this young animal is growing properly. One of the sad situations and we see a lot in our travels is the orphan or rejected foal. Uh, nobody wants to see that and it's a very challenging time for the young horse and for the owners of this young horse. The average foal will drink seven to 10 times per hour uh, if that mare was alive for the first 30 days of age. So trying to replicate that is extremely difficult and very labor intensive. So probably the most common is that we try to feed them every one to two hours. And then as they get older, we try to spread that out a little bit more. Waiting this length of time though, it does perpetuate stress because this is what the young, this was not what the young horse was developed for. And you get GI upset due to extreme hunger. Things like diarrhea, eating foreign things, ulcers, immune compromise, and sucking and licking of everything due to hunger uh, can create a lot of problems for this young animal. So I'm just bringing up a list here of our Purina feeds and our Purina supplements. As discussed earlier in the presentation, we generally recommend uh, com a maternity complete feed and that you choose something within that portfolio that is for. Uh, that brood mare in full and that you always balance it with a ration balancer or a supplement appropriately. So what is the ideal farm? And there's a lot of things that that depends on. Are they mare or foals? The number of horses? The frequency of the feeding? The location of the feeding? And the quality of the forage? Water intake is probably the number one factor when I'm looking at what feed to pick for your customer because it greatly influences digestion for the horse. Foals should be fed what they were crate feeding with their mothers post weaning for approximately four to six weeks. So this will vary among breeds. So just a reminder for those people out there, if they're speaking with their customers, that really the short version is that foal when it's being weaned should stay on the same maternity program like it was with its mother. You would then transition it to the corresponding uh, juvenile program. Example, Evolution Maternity, you'd move them over to Evolution Juvenile. Omeline 300, you could move to Omeline Progression or Omeline Sport Plus. In the Equilibrium Sport XT, you can leave the weanling on this product if you prefer. Uh, most often, I move them over to the Evolution Juvenile. The Equilibrium Pro Plus, you can leave the weanling on this product as well, but I really like using the Evolution Juvenile. It is our premium product, and as that young foal is developing and learning to adjust to all different types of hay, it does a fantastic job. Keeping that weanling hydrated is of most importance in all situations, and probably one of the biggest challenges when they're not nursing with the mother anymore. So here are some helpful hints. So our Evolution Juvenile is the first choice for your fast growing animals and if the customer has concerns about DODs or OCD issues and should be balanced with a ration balancer such as Optimal if you're low balling the feeding rate of the complete feed. So this is that low NSC product, that low sugar and starch product, which requires excellent hydration because of the fiber content. Omeline Progression Plus, that is a great transition from the Omeline 300. If hay quality is an issue, Sport Plus brings a superior fiber component to the plate. And I use that quite often if I'm concerned about uh, the fiber coming from the hay, and if they're not willing to feed, let's say a hay collaborator, this does a great job. Equilibrium Sport XT for weanlings and young horses in group feeding situation is terrific, but it has to be done with breeds that can tolerate a higher NSC product. And the Pro Plus, provides an economical choice. And even though it's economical, it's very fortified and it does a tremendous job. So I use this very often in group feeding situations and I prefer that it is fed with a better quality hay. So here are examples of our different types of feeds and the formats they come in. We have extruded, sweet feed, chunks, multi-particle and pellet. And those are what the textures look like. I wanna remind you that uh, our Diamond V XPC uh, from Cargill is in all our broodmare and um, the premium and platinum broodmare and full products. And it does an excellent job in supporting gut health. So let's talk a little bit about sweet feed. So the key advantage is it's palatable and it generally contains, you know, the pellet portion contains the mineral and the vitamins and the processed grains and it's versatile. 
The pre and maternity sweet pea products have high omega-3 and diamond V XPC. So the ideal situation for uh, recommending this product is Ole and Marin Fuller turned out 24 seven, or at least for 17 hours a day. And there's no concern over bone development issues. It can be used in situations where you're really concerned and you want to minimize the risk of choke. So consider Omelene 300, Omelene Progression, and Omelene Sport Plus in those cases. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the pelleted feeds and the multiparticle feeds. The key advantage is uniformity. It increases starch digestibility. It's convenient and easy to handle, so the storage um, rate is quite a bit longer than the sweet feed. Generally lower NSC, so that's that lower sugars and starches, if you're concerned about that or your customer's concerned about that. The pre and maternity multiparticle product contains high levels of omega-3 and our diamond VXPC. So some situations where we could use this is where the forage quality needs a little help. So perhaps they aren't too sure about what's in the hay or how good it is. So I would more lean to the evolution maternity type products. Concerns about bone development issues and a desire for a low non-structural carbohydrate diet. So you would look at your evolution maternity, your evolution juvenile, and again, a reminder, it's multi-particle and low NSC. Equilibrium Pro Plus is our pelleted version. It has a moderate NSC. Just a reminder, water intake is of high importance with any program, but with higher fiber pellets, we remind people to make sure that they're talking customers about that and if you have concerns I often recommend that you feed the feed wet. So we're going to talk a little bit about our extruded product and what extrusion does. So extrusion that's when the product or the ingredient I should say is cooked under pressure with heat and moisture. The terrific thing about that is it really increases the digestibility specifically the starch and minimizes the incidences of colic and the other thing it does is it denaturalizes the protein. So if you have horses that have susceptibility to allergies, this is a good conversation to have. It can also drop your uh, volume or your rate of intake by approximately 50% because it's so highly digestible. And it also minimizes mold and bacterial counts. The particular product that Purina has is the Sport X. XT contains diamond VXPC and omega-3 and has been recently updated. I generally use this for hard keeping mares or in automatic feeder situations, group feeding, and mares with allergies. So considering using the equilibrium sport XT in those situations. So here's some take home messages. Uh, we should be balancing for all nutrients in all stages of gestation and not just in the third trimester. For your foals, ration should be updated as the foal nurses and then is weaned and then grows into a mature horse. So this requires continual adaptation. Tape weighing, body condition scoring, top line evaluation scores are all helpful tools to help you figure out what that horse needs. And we have our online ration balancer that is key to ensuring adequate nutrient sizes for all or nutrient it is key to ensuring adequate nutrients for all sizes of horses. Breeders genetically select what they want to do, and that greatly influences outcomes. But the one thing we can do is provide a good nutritional support system. Intervention for orphan foals or foals with mothers that don't have ability to milk provides nutritional support that is crucial. Understanding the feed choices and how they impact the broodmare and foal Look at our feed selection guide to help you and your customer make the appropriate choices. Pregnancy and growth is the more, most important foundation in this future athlete or family companion's life. Not the time to minimize the importance of nutrition for proper development. For economic feeders using commodities, ration balancers are encouraged, such as optimal. And if cost is an issue, at a minimum, they should be using equities or easy balance to ensure appropriate macro and micronutrients. Probably the broodmare and foal situation is one of the times you should reach out to your local equine Purina rep or use our Purina Connect to help you walk through what is best for your customers if you have any concerns. 
utilizing our web rationing tool is greatly beneficial. All Purina equine feeds are made in Strathroy and it is a medication free plant, so you can recommend our products with the greatest amount of assurance. If you need more information, please reach out to your local Purina dealer or your local Purina equine nutrition consultant and our wonderful people at Purina Connect are available Monday to Friday and can help walk you through what the proper recommendations would be.